And Mike, welcome to Wigtown Book Festival. Um, you've been you. here for a couple of days um, yep. talking about your, your book. But first of all, what do you make of coming to Wigtown? Have oh, you been, lovely, have you, yeah, have you been lovely. Here? Have you been here before? I've no, never been here and came for the bad weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think in lovely weather it would be really lovely. But yeah. it's nice anyway, isn't it? It's very sort of dramatic looking out over the harbour with all the mist and yeah. uh, even even in horrible weather, except for the wind, it, it just gets really windy. Yeah. It can be a bit hard. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, when it's beautiful, it is very, I very bet. beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We, we only moved up here this year, so it's we're still seeing it with very fresh eyes, but yeah. it's still a beautiful place. And you get a sense of, it's the first time I've lived somewhere where I've got a sense of the season changing. Because you get like the geese migrating in and all the birds migrating in and out. So yeah, you can hear them okay. and see them and you know spot the first swallows and see the mm -hmm. way the landscape changes because it's just so, so yeah, like, lovely. in yeah. your face. And I've never really like living in a city. Obviously, I know what the seasons are like, but here you do feel them. And it's it's, yeah, mm. it's been really mm. nice. Yeah. And so you've come here to talk about your book. Yes. Um, yeah. With Andrew Gregg, is that right? Andrew Gregg, yeah, Greg. that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about your book and how you came together to write it? Certainly, yeah. Well, I thought maybe I should do a bit of writing. Um, Andrew, at the same at the, the time of that, he'd just done a, a novel, uh, which was probably quite hard to write. A kind of uh, kind of about the Reavers and the a lot of quite gritty, bloody kind of tale. And he was uh, being, not, I wouldn't say pressurised, but there was an idea that he might do either a prequel to it or a sequel. Mm -hmm. And he didn't really fancy either. But what he did fancy, because I was saying I'd like to write, and he was a fan of the string, but he's about nine years younger mm -hmm. than me. So he, he grew up with, well, we were kind of, had, had broken through into the folk scene, certainly, mm -hmm. but not quite onto the, onto the concert circuit. Mm -hmm. and he really loved the music so he thought we could do a two-parter with me talking about how I managed to get into the string band mm -hmm. and him talking about his uh, his faith in us from afar in Fife mm -hmm. he was brought up and you know mm -hmm. far away from the, the idea of what we were doing mm -hmm. but he liked the idea and, and he tried, they tried to put together a kind of uh, imitation group of a string band but it didn't really work right. so he ended up being a famous novelist wow. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. so for him this it's is a bit of a dream come true yeah, well, uh, yeah. you? <laughs> it took him a while to realise that he wasn't and they went as far as going down to London with a tape mm -hmm. to the producer of the incredible string band Joe Boyd and handed him a tra tape and, and he said uh, I don't think I've got anything slow enough to play this on <laughs> But they oh. persisted, but they got the idea eventually. Oh, they went okay. down in the scampy lorry because they couldn't really afford <laughs> any other <laughs> transport. It's a good thing. Did you stop off at the motorway service? The, uh, what was the famous motorway service station that everyone used to stop off when they were touring and just have? Yeah, and the yeah, there's a few of them. Yeah. Yeah. Because you just don't get that. Like, I mean, you obviously get touring bands, but if you're a big touring band now, you're in your, in your, you know truck overnight and you know you just sleep through but True. well yeah. if, you, if you are in that position yeah. to be in a touring band <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you were, I've never you know. quite well in, in the middle of when we did American things yeah. in the peak of a spring mass probably did a bit of that but yeah. usually it's, it's a bit homier than that yeah but sometimes you meet at tea bay services or something yeah. so if you're yes, lucky yes. enough you might, might yeah, meet some that's friends the there kind of thing. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you were saying you broke you went from the folk scene eventually into the concert scene yes as as one band to another how do you do that i mean we haven't even made it into the folk scene yet but um we'll you know how do you get into the folk scene well actually it was joe boyd entirely really mm -hmm. he when he saw he originally saw robert and clive without me and he thought this is amazing they were doing that kind of uh music that that, that kind of uh, folk uh, british folk music but as if it had gone to the Appalachians and come back mm -hmm. with a bit of a twist yeah. and and it was really kind of quite funky I suppose you'd say yeah. and he loved that and then he came back the year later and by that time they'd employed me <laughs> and he said, he said to him oh I'm glad you by that he was representing Electra Records then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he was going to set up a thing in London for an office for them and his heart sank because he thought god there's three of them 
and they've written songs. And he liked the <laughs> trance stuff. Okay. And he, ha he hated the kind of, uh, the, the kind of uh, self-pitying kind of whining songs of that era that people were prone to do. Mm -hmm. But then when we played for him, he thought they were really, really good. And he got in touch with Electra and Jack Goldsman signed us. Mm -hmm. And we made an album. Mm -hmm. But then they, they, every, they were, apart from me, I, I was living with my, my parents, but they were really died and they were beatniks. Mm -hmm. So if, in those days, people traveled a lot. And if you got a bit of an advance from that, they got a couple of hundred quid, maybe 300 quid each. Mm -hmm. And if, if that happened, you traveled. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. unbeknown to me, as we came back from having made the album, Clive told me that he was going to Afghanistan and Robin was going to, and Robin had actually gone to Morocco <laughs> <laughs> with, wow. with the advance. So the, so the van that we had had just disappeared really. Yeah. Well. So <laughs> but they had their experiences yeah, they, to, uh, to, to and, bring back. Uh, yeah, but, but Clive didn't really want to continue. We could tell that he wouldn't, you know, he didn't really have a lot of songs. Mm -hmm. And also um, he really wanted it to be a drug band. That mm -hmm. was, that's the kind of music he really liked because he played banjo and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, an American record company, you know, didn't really want British people doing no, Ameri <laughs> doing no. drug band music, or you know, and because yeah. uh, because that was the kind of music, the real thing was was what everyone listened to on the campus radio yeah, at that right, time. Yeah. But the meeting of those two things, the songwriting and the jug battle, and all that kind of thing, is what made well your that sound made that made the first sense. album, yeah, yeah. And it, which is really more or less what we were doing around the clubs at that time. Mm -hmm. And we had our own club then. We had an all night folk club called Clyde's Incredible Folk Club mm -hmm. in Socky Hall Street in Glasgow. Oh mm -hmm. right! And it was I don't think there were any other ones in Britain then. So we yeah. got a tremendous number of people playing there. Everyone mm -hmm. wanted to come and play, but it only lasted about two months. But we had. <laughs> Because yeah. yeah. you're thinking of starting a little folk session here, you know, because it's such a nice space here, and it's just like yeah. you, you, a lot of the formal places, you know, out on the street, out on the high street for doing that, don't exist anymore. And That's people right. Coming yeah. back into people's houses to do that kind of thing, and it's just like whatever way you can find to to create that thing again still seems just as important now yeah, as it maybe was it's really a brilliant so. one in Edinburgh called Doug, uh, Douglas's House Music That's mm. we, we know, went to play there yeah, 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 yeah we did yeah, yeah. it's yeah. fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. 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 that's a really good that's the best place to play in that's a great place to play yeah that's really good and so you've had I mean so many people have been influenced by your music all the way through those things and you've just done a gig in Edinburgh for the yes, festival that's right, yeah. with all these different people who that's kind of right. be well, playing your Joe, music. Joe really picked all the people so I didn't have that much to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and did, but did you enjoy the, did yeah, you enjoy the experience? Oh very of much, the yeah. once I got used to the fact that it was it was a tribute because usually for a tribute you have to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the but idea what to, that if you're not there? Yeah, the, idea <laughs> to, the idea of enjoying a tribute to you without really... I did like two songs with George and yeah. The band was fantastic. Oh, great. And uh, it, was, it was a great event. Fantastic. And, and I, I, mean, I grew up with your records. My parents had your records um, yeah. when I was growing up. And lots of people have mentioned, you know, over the, the years. And I think it does seep into... Like Ben was saying before, we've people tell us that maybe it's the, the cello and the guitar and the ukuleles and the combination of instruments, harmoniums and things. That yeah. Our music even sounds like yours, even though it, it probably <laughs> just seeped in somewhere. Mm. Um, but I think you must have had a big influence on a lot of bands, traditional yeah, and exactly. songwriters. Well, it's, some, I mean, it's something you can't really spot from inside. You know, mm. Sometimes people will say directly, like Robert Plant or something, you know, mm. with, we listened to the string band and, and uh, followed the instructions. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but usually you don't get direct things like that. And you just, you know, it's for outside people to say where the influence mm. is passed around, yeah, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I just finished a bit about the, how we yeah. made the concert hall thing. Yeah. Well, so they toddled off and then Joe thought, well, actually, Clive didn't really contribute that much. Maybe we just carry on with... Robert and Mike, and maybe he will come back, or mm -hmm. maybe he won't, but they can be the incredible string band. And they got in touch with Jack Holtzman, who was trying to promote the acts on Electra that were had not really been accepted here, like uh, Judy Collins and Tom Paxson mm -hmm. were doing a big concert in uh, the Albert Hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joe approached Jack and said, do you think that the string band, could, Mike and Robin, that is, could do an opening set for them, you know, in the Albert Hall? Mm -hmm. 
And he said, yeah, okay, it's great, because we're all in the same kind of label. And they didn't need that. I mean, either of them could probably have filled it on their own. Mm. They were really quite well known, but not really as well as they became known. Mm. And so that was the first concert hall gig we did. Mm -hmm. And coming on from that, it became a, a concert. So it's down to Joe, really, mm. and Jack Holtzman. We we've, we've done that. It's it's quite an interesting thing to do that because we we started off as a three piece and then we went down to a two piece when Poppy had her baby, and um, and then very occasionally we've had the opportunity to bring in a few more players and like and turn it into something that would work better in a concert hall. Yeah. And even though that's not what what necessarily like there's something something really enjoyable about doing it just as a just as a small band but then there's also yeah. it is, and it's a different kind of experience but it does open you up to different venues and things so it's definitely something that we're looking at to to you know maybe do a concert hall yeah. thing as well and it's a different kind of thing but it, yeah. it kind of works I, I really way. like doing different we do uh, we do gigs with uh, my daughter Georgia and a Glasgow band called Trembling Bells mm -hmm. and that's like a full scale kind of they, they just do we do string band material from the first five albums mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <coughs> and they do uh, the, the big things like uh, Maya and sell you the song because you can do that with a big kind yeah. of band but mm -hmm. then uh, lately I, I just did a gig with just me and Georgia and a grand piano mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. uh, the end of the road festival. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah that's quite near I and mean, that's so near Salisbury isn't it that's yeah. near yeah, that, yeah. Donna Way. I've yeah, never actually be been but it's the same is it the same site as the Lama Tree, Tree festival yeah. that they yeah. have there but it's, end uh, of the road rough, sounds beautiful I'm not sure if it is but it's the same uh, time of year, okay. late, late kind yeah. of mm -hmm. yeah. festival. It's, it's like the festival I've always wanted to go to because it's always had the best lineup, like of the sort of music that I'm sort of particularly interested. Yeah, yeah it sounds um, really good. And also, it's in a big kind of park area. Mm. It used to be a stately home, yeah, I think, grounds, and so yeah, yeah. it's trees and it's a lovely uh, mm -hmm. environment. Yeah. Very nice. Peacocks. Yeah. And peacocks, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Waking with the dawn, hammering along, exposed to those who frown, the ones that bring you down. You've seen the sights today, but you're still far away from your goal, sleeping in. grows bold people stop and stare and I'm staring at
after all these years. Thank you for singing to me. It's very nice. Oh, it's a pleasure.